Hello, okay. Thank you for waiting. I'm very sorry about that. Our audio uh, wasn't working. My mic receiver died. The battery died. I thought I'd fully charged it, so not sure what happened there. Um, but hello, welcome. Today I'm continuing to build the Congo, the Japanese battleship uh, for the Fujimi set and using the Pontos upgrade kit. And today I am building uh, these winches here you can see there so these winches were used uh, all over the ship there was five of them that I need to build so uh, if you can see in the wider shot you've got this panel here this has all the parts that need to go into making that so it looks like there's you know maybe ten parts so that's going to be a, a little bit fiddly but I've already found the first part I need there's some turned brass pieces that uh, I need both of those pieces. So there's one, two pieces there. So, because I'm using doing five winches, I'm going to get all five of those out and I'm putting them in a new paper cup uh, to help keep them all separate, separated and protected so that they don't go missing. Uh, these pieces, even when they're built, they're so small that it's easy to misplace them. So, got to keep them all together there you go there's those five turned brass pieces now the rest of the pieces are flat that will need to be folded and glued put the box of so the parts out of the way um, so that's all these pieces and I believe they are all on the same sheet that I've been using so 500 to 600 So let's get into it and see what our first piece is. So we're looking at this one here, 601, and I stick onto it 602. Yep, that looks right. So get my scalpel. Uh, got some music playing today. We're playing um, World of Warships. It's a, uh, a mix of um, some of the more relaxed tracks. Uh, they recently put this mix up on. Um, on their channel uh, with a, a cool uh, illustration of a, a girl studying inside the bridge of one of the ships in the game so it's kind of cool um, they call it um, World of Warship study girl mix all right so you've got 601 and 602 I'll just do one at a time first keep my finger on it so they don't pop out and fly off you can see we've got little cutaways here, which is where I'm assuming the next pieces will be glued. Alright, so let's get some glue on my tile. The tile's just out of shot, but it's um, where I keep put um, dobs of glue that I fill up my applicator with and then put onto the, uh, onto the objects that I'm gluing. And the reason why I use a tile is because a tile doesn't absorb the glue and make it dry out fast. Uh, if you have a look at the applicator there, you might be able to see it's got a little bit of glue on the end, so I'm just going to burn that off. And I'm going to make sure that the tines are separated enough. If they get too close together, it doesn't pick enough glue. If they're too far apart, then the surface tension doesn't let the glue stick in there. Okay, so, uh, one second, let me just change what I'm seeing on screen. Okay, that's a bit easier for me to see what's going on now. Alright, so I've got some thin, but I think I'm going to also want some gel. Put some gel glue out. Uh, let me know if the audio mix is good. If I've got it too loud, or it could be louder. Just uh, clean off the needle there a little bit. This is my uh, needle applicator. I use this for the uh, the gel glue because it doesn't really use the surface tension like the um, thin glue does. Alright, so the first two pieces, basically just one goes on top of the other, but is there an orientation? I don't think so. I think that's the same both ways. Yep, it's symmetrical. All right, so I'll hold it down with these. 
bring it back a little bit more so you can see more clearly. And I'll just get a little dab of glue. And let's spread that. Oops. That should be more than enough. I prefer these angled tweezers for picking up things. Just find the angle a little bit more convenient. Okay, that looks like it's square. Went on pretty well. All right, so next we need to 598 and that goes there, so that's this piece. And then we've got 597, which we fold these two up, and that goes here. All right, we'll get both of those then. Five nine six, five nine eight, five nine seven. There we go. I love how you can even see tiny little rivets on these middle parts. That's why I get them because the detail is just exceptional, much more than you could possibly get into a plastic kit. Now this is a small piece. Got to be careful. Uh, I might bend and glue that one first. So I don't know if you can see, but we've got a couple of rivets on each side and we've got a score mark down each side there. So that tells me that this is the outside. So I need to bend up those sides away from this side. So if I flip it over, I need to bend them up. And because that's so small, I think I'm gonna use my bending tool. There we go. That's one end. Now I can't turn it around and do the same thing because that would crush the piece that I've already folded. So I'm going to try and just put that end underneath the bender and then bend the whole piece up. Oh yes, that worked. Maybe a bit too much there. You've got to be careful not to bend it backwards and forwards too many times because that can make it break. These parts are very, very thin. All right, I think I know where that's going. And that will be here. Like that, but I'll double check to be sure. Yes, you can see it there. So it's a cradle which will hold this piece when that's assembled. All right, I think I'll use gel glue for this. Just a tiny little dab. I'm going to turn that around so I can get access to it a bit easier. further how's that I think that looks pretty good I might just put a little bit of thin underneath that let it wick into the bottom just to give it a little bit more strength there we go all right, now the other piece, that just goes flat on top. So I will use the thick glue for that. Because if I put a dob of thin glue, it'll have set by the time I get the piece over to it. 
So I use the thicker glue for the pieces that uh, I'm not using the capillary action to put the glue in. Alright, let's find that other piece. It's over here. Uh, which way does that go? I've got it backwards. Okay. So the broad end goes towards me if it's on the right. So this cross piece here, that's in the center line. That makes sense. Oh, yeah. So that's that's already dried. That's the thick glue too. All right, let's scrape it off a bit. Oh, that's coming off as well. Oh no. Hmm. All right, maybe I can use the thin. And just press on this to lift it up a little. And then get... Oh, the thin didn't stick. There we go. Get it underneath. And I hope I can maneuver it before it sets. Nope. The thin sets instantly. Oh boy. Okay. Let's pull it apart and re-stick it with the gel. Let's scrape off what we can. I might actually burn off the stuff on the other side. It's a bit cleaner. I mean, it, it does make it black, but um, it gets rid of more of the glue without me making scratches. So I got it all, not quite. Got to be careful not to do it too long because it can actually damage the brass. Now this has got a little on this side. Maybe I can just dip that in the flame as well. Okay, that looks like that'll sit flat now. All right, let's try that again. Oh, gee, the gel is already starting to set over here on the tile. The gel sets quicker on the tile, but slower on models, believe it or not. And the super fine glue the thin stuff is the reverse it takes longer to dry on the tile but it dries instantly on the parts oops that got <laughs> that got bent up okay let's got that Let's just uh, give it a little scrape to get rid of excess glue. I want to keep it as clean as possible so it doesn't show up when it's painted. Uh, I think my problem the last time was that I didn't use enough glue. I was trying to be conservative because if you use too much and it spills out everywhere, you've got to clean it up. So I'm going to put a bit more on this time. Yes, that's Aki, you can hear. I fed him just before the stream again. But that's not enough for him, apparently. It's not sticking. No. Why is that not sticking? Right, maybe I'll put a bit of a th more thin on there as well. I 
Okay, that almost flooded it with thin there, so that's got to stay. Let's see if I can actually get the thin to work here. Oh, that didn't pick it up. Come on, there we go. Turn this around. Sticking to the tweezers. Okay, there we go. It's not quite in the right spot. Okay, I think that's close enough. All right, I'm making a little bit of mess here with the glue. It's a bit of excess there. There we go. And I'll get a little bit on the end here as well. Wow, that looks much better. the the mat on the back there hang on just got to pick it up to clean that off because I don't want to crush the thing that I've already glued down on the other side all right that's clean now flip that over all right now we're on to the next sub assembly so we have Part 595, let me just move this out of the way for a moment. 595, which has to be bent up all four of those. And where does that end up going? So there's 595. Um, and that goes into that. Yeah, this is definitely in this, but the round here it's open and around here it's closed. So what part is that? So this brass piece here goes in there. Ah, that's the ring on the brass piece. So how do I get the brass piece in there? Because that's solid brass, and this is inside there. That's tricky. Well, let's just make 595 and see if I can maneuver it around this, how it comes together. Alright, 595. Okay, there's a few of them here. Let's start from one end. I like this track. This is what's playing usually when I'm in port, looking at my ships and figuring out what upgrades I want to put on them. Okay, so the rivets are on this side. So that means we flip it over to fold these up. back first so you can see and then the front squish those down a little bit oops that's not straight stand that up push this one in and then we can separate them out like that Okay, and let's fold up this last piece. Okay, 
All right. So that means we now get one of these spindle pieces. And I need to cut that. Oh, camera's gone. What's going on there? One moment, please. There we go. Hello. Sorry about that. I'm not sure what happened there. I've got a um, a wired power supply with a dummy battery in there now, and that should be keeping the camera alive. So, not sure why that turned off then. It's a little bit out of focus, isn't it? Let's uh, just tweak that for you. There we go. All right, now, how much of this do we cut and where? Okay, so this end has got a long piece. So the narrower barrel has a long piece and the broad barrel, shorter. Okay, I think there looks right. Okay, so we've now got those two. Put that aside. And this has to go in here somehow. I suppose I could open this up. And then drop this in. Now, is that symmetrical? There's two going down there. And there's none there. Okay, so that means they're different. All right, so looking at this picture here, we can see there's one of those going down, but on the reverse side, we haven't got those going down. So that means the bigger side of the winch brass turn part goes on the side with the two lines. So let's stand that up and see if I can drop this in. Yes, this, this hole here on this side is big enough to pass this through. I think I'll need two pairs of tweezers for this. I might have to open that right up. Oh, this is tricky. Oh, almost. Squeeze it together. It's not quite f going. Oh, there we go. All right. Now I want to use as little glue as possible because this is a nice, nice, smooth, clean edge. So I don't want to cover it with glue. So I'm going to try and put the glue in that little gap. Wish me luck. There we go, that went in beautifully. Probably couldn't see that from your angle, but it just wicked right in. Okay, looks like I'm gonna to do the same on this side. Hopefully this one goes just as well. Oops. There it goes. Beautiful. All glued and no residue. That's great. All right, now I should probably glue these two pieces down because the uh, springiness of the brass is holding them out just a little. 
That's not quite lined up either. There we go. All right, don't mind too much about a little bit of excess glue on this surface because it's a flat surface and I can sand it or file it off, so. Okay, there's one side. Is there enough glue, glue, glue left for the other side? Oh, it's already dried in the applicator. Alright. Excellent. Ah, uh, bigger wood. Let's get you affiliate. Ah, thank you, mate. Good to see you. Hope you're doing well. Thanks for coming by. I appreciate the support. So I'm building today a winch. Well, I'm going to be building five of them uh, for the Battleship Congo. That's what they're going to look like in the end. And on the wide shot, you can see here, this full panel is all the instructions. So far, I have done that. Let me turn it around so you can see the same side. So, yeah, that's what I'm building right now. So, that then now needs to go on here. Before I do that, though, let me just see if there are any other parts. Nice, thank you very much. <laughs> it's fiddly work, but it's enjoyable. All right, so... We've got 614 here. Where does that go? So, it's not on this piece. Ah, okay, looking at the big picture, that's it there in the middle, which means I'm gonna have to thread the uh, shaft of this piece. Where is it? Here. I'm going to have to thread the shaft of that through this and that then goes here and that goes in the middle all right so let's see okay so that is 614 Six one four. There's five six zero oh, five. Six one four. Here we go. Oh, there we go. Get it in the frame for you. If you've got any questions on uh, the process, please don't hesitate to call out in chat and ask. Let's see if I can bend this without using the uh, the tool. Oh, I'll get a bit of glue on the end there. Let's burn that off. All right. So we are folding this outwards. Sorry if that's not on camera. It's a bit hard to do everything on camera. Okay. Now we fold up the other side. There we go. Now it's not perfectly um, parallel just yet. Close. Up oh, too far. Damn it. That always happens. Hmm. Maybe I should have used the bending tool after all because it's a little bit asymmetrical oh these things they're so easy like, to fly away gotta be careful all right let's bend that up a little bit and at the bottom in so we can get them both at the same height
that's got it, I think. Let's uh, stand it up and have a look. Oh, jeez, it doesn't want to stand, but uh, I think that's pretty close. All right. Uh, what got you into shipbuilding? That's a, a difficult to say, a difficult to say story, but um, I think um, when I was a, a kid, like 10 years old or something like that, my dad knew I liked space stuff and I liked um, Japanese anime, which of course I didn't know was anime at the time. Uh, and he told me that there was a new series coming out, he saw in the TV guide, that he, th that I th he thought I would like, called Star Blazers. And it was the, um, the Japanese anime space battleship Yamato. And it was about um, the Japanese battleship Yamato, which was in World War II, being retrofitted and turned into a spaceship. And being sent across the universe on a, a special mission to save the Earth. And I loved the series, it was so much fun. Um, and I think the idea of ships is something that it, it started there. And then as a, a young teenager, I got a bit into to model making. Um, I made a few ships then, but it was just as a kid, as toys, you know. Um, very basic kits, um, not being very careful with them, just using glue with strings of glue everywhere. Um, and then uh, sort of over the years, that hobby sort of faded. But uh, in more recent years, about seven years ago, World of Warships came out. And it looked fun, so I got into the beta, and uh, I haven't stopped playing it since. So I think it was anime, funnily enough, that started the the interest. But it was World of Warships that really reignited it. That, that it's from that game I think that I really uh, began to appreciate the engineering and the beauty of the uh, World War Two era warships. Okay, is that of a direction? I can't see if it does, so we are going to just put that on and hope for the best. Okay, there we go. Straighten that up a little bit. Great. Alright, now I think this piece is ready to go on here. So, I'm just checking if there's anything I've missed. I don't think so. Nope, we're all good. Alright. So, a little dab of glue on that indentation in the middle there. I need a bit more of a dab of glue than that. There we go. And this goes on there's a hole on each side. So which side faces which? Okay, I don't think it really matters looking at this. Oh wait, I see. Um, this faces towards me, the big piece faces towards me. Oop. I should be getting in close and using my magnifier glasses to do that. Got to move fairly quick before the glue that I've already applied dries. Is that going to stay? Yep. Excellent. All right, that's half the winch done. Whew. Fine work. Really cool. I don't have any hobbies like this at all. I think I'd struggle with my lack of patience. Yeah, I thought that too. Um, in my case, at least, I have ADHD. So I do have an issue with maintaining interest on something. But I also have um, what's called hyperfocus as a part of ADHD. And that lets me often stick with a hobby because I just get focused on it. And this, I think it helps me um, because it takes so much attention and so much fine uh, detail work. Um, I think it helps me hyper-focus on this. And up, up until now, most of my hyper-focus interests have been on the computer and that's not super healthy. 
So, um, I wanted to do, uh, to have an interest that was more hands-on, that actually let me do something crafty, creative. Um, I mean, I do other things that are creative, but something that's physical. Uh, I considered Lego, but I realized how expensive that was, and it wasn't sort of the realism and detail that I like. Um, but model building, I saw a few YouTube videos and the, the master craftsmanship that some people ha have for that is just mind-blowing. And uh, that inspired me. And I think with that, I thought, well, it's going to be expensive anyway, whether it's Lego or model building or something else. So I may as well do something that satisfies my need or my interest in having the detail. And as you can see, there is very fine detail in these models. <laughs> All right. So, we've already put 597 on. 614 is the piece that we did that goes in the middle. So, what we do now is this piece, which looks like the generator that goes with the winch. So, if you're looking at the big picture there, you can see here, that's the winch itself. Perhaps the, uh, the rope goes around here. And this is the generator that powers it. And so, we've got this brass turned piece and we've got two pieces that we need to fold that go on it and they go on top is there anything underneath that oh yes this is what's underneath this this little cradle which I've already made so we need to get 594 and 596 we'll start with 596 because that's a bigger piece uh, that's interesting I'm a bit like that I'm all or nothing on things. I'm either obsessed or interested at all. Yeah, I feel that, mate. I really do. Um, I bet people can get so accurate with these things. Good on you. Uh, like you say, obsessing over PCs and it's super. That's right. Definitely. Um, doing something with my hands exercises a different part of my brain too, I think. Um, I've seen videos of some of the folks on YouTube. Um, and one guy in Korea, he, is, he was one of the specific ones I was thinking of. Um, he goes to extra extraordinary lengths to um, do incredible detail and accuracy uh, to the point where he's scraping off all the details that are on the plastic kit already and re-sculpting them with epoxy clay um, down to the point where he's even sculpted individual rivets with clay hundreds of them it just blows my mind the attention to detail it's just incredible I don't think I'd ever want to get that much attention to detail or that much accuracy but these upgrade kit parts, which you're seeing here, the brass parts, they're not part of the plastic kit. They're an optional upgrade and they're commercial rather than doing it yourself. So I figured that's a good compromise for me to get extra detail without having to make it all up myself. All right, let's flip this over because the creases are on this side. That means I fold away from them. And this is basically just a box with a cord coming off it. And I think that might be a power cord. There we go. That's one. Oops. I think I might do the opposite side because it's a bit bigger. And I need the access. Got to be very careful I don't break off that cord. Okay, that's two. Three. I don't think I'm going to need to glue these walls because they're already staying in place and there's not going to be any any load put on them a little bit more there we go that looks pretty good all right so we'll get the uh, the barrel And, yep, this piece goes on this end. Yep, I might do 594 before I glue that on so I can do them together. 594 is similar to the previous part I did, um, but it is just smaller and it doesn't have that power cord on it. 
I'm just going to leave those there. So I'm going to just kind of cut these off camera. 594. Just to give you an idea of the scale, there's the piece that I'm currently bending on my fingertip. If I turn it over, you'll be able to see the fold lines. There you go. So that's what I've got to fold up to make a box. Now, just looking at this, we've got one curved edge. So that curved edge will go here, and I guess in the straight edge will be just off the, the back of that. And looking at this one, I know the cord goes towards the back of it. And there's a, yeah, I can see just here, this end has a curve, and that end is flat. All right, good to know. I think I might use my bending tool for this piece. Uh, and yeah, I'm going to rotate this around to get my smaller bending tools on the inside edge there. Uh, this, this tong is narrow enough that I can bend three of the sides without having to move it. Oh, is it just too thick? Let's see. Yeah, it is. All right, I'll have to move it over just a little bit. And I'll have to bend the other two by hand. It's tricky. There we go. And the last one. There we go. All right, that looks pretty good to me. So, let's look. Where's the curved end? All right, that is. So, if we put this here, that is going to flip over onto there and this is the curved end it's going to flip over onto there i think i might put a dab of thick glue onto the square parts and then put them onto the the barrel Forgive my silence, this takes concentration. Okay, I need to move that back a bit, I think. Okay, it's dried. It should be all right if I just, yep, folded it down a little bit. Now it sits about right. When it's dry, I won't do it yet, but this piece here is bent around, I think, to the back there. And it just touches the back of the generator. All right, now the other part is gonna be a bit trickier because I have to line it up with um, what I've already put down. Yep, 
Yep, that is the right side. That's my cat, you can probably hear. Looking for food again. Now this glue's gotten too dry and thick. I might need to get some fresh glue. Let's just see if there's enough for one more piece. I turn this around so I'm doing it here. Oh, I like cake. Thank you for following. I know your name. <laughs> it's good to see you here. I really appreciate you coming by. Uh, this is tricky. I'm just putting together a generator which goes on a winch which goes on the deck of the ship and there's actually five of these to make. And I've been at this for maybe 45 minutes on one. So, yeah, it's a bit of work. Is that aligned? Pretty close. Oops, straighten that up a little. There we go. That looks good. Excellent. There's our generator. Now we put that onto the winch and we've completed our first part for today. Uh, hi Neil, I hope you get a few later. Oh, thank you very much. I appreciate you coming by for the support. I, I didn't like sort of begging people for support for the affiliate thing, but I guess uh, it's only once off. And if you enjoy yourself here tonight, maybe you'll come back again someday. All right, so now I need to glue this piece. Let me put it back in the field of view. I need to glue this piece. Bigger Wood, thank you for the follow. I appreciate it, buddy. Uh, that means a lot to me. I'm guessing that means that you're enjoying yourself enough to want to come back and watch again. So that's wonderful to hear. Thank you very much. Um, so yes, this goes up onto here. So I think I'll put a dob of glue on each of those little pieces and then I've got to thread this shaft into the hole in the middle of that so that's going to be a little bit of maneuvering let me get some fresh glue for that you got to do what you got to do <laughs> yeah it's the hustle isn't it <laughs> uh, I know you stream too so um you would understand you do stream, right? I'm not imagining that. Let's clean off my applicator. Yeah, you do. Excellent. So cool how tiny it is. It really is tiny here. Look at this. This is a generator that probably would have been like 10 tons in real life. And that's how big it is on my fingertip. <laughs> really tiny. Alright, so let's finish our first winch. Oh, you can't squeeze too hard or it can fling out and you can't squeeze too soft or it'll drop. And it's different for every piece because they're different sizes and thicknesses. Trying to thread the needle here. Oh. There we go. Oh, a little bit further in. I think that's it. Oh, not quite. Oh, no! <laughs> uh, okay. Maybe I put this in first and then glue the parts on top. I've still got one part on top left. Oh, this part's coming off. 
Oh boy, stop, stop, stop. Let's glue that on to more securely. Uh, I need a bit of fin. Uh, damn, yeah, indeed. <laughs> it's one of those things where you could be going along great, and then you could just drop a piece and step on it. That's what I did last stream. <laughs> Took me half an hour to unfold it enough to put it back together again. And I couldn't just keep, uh, like, make another piece because it was the only piece in the kit. Just opening up the applicator tw uh, tines a little bit so I can get some ultra thin super glue in there. Put a bit on the other side as well. Jimmy Jester, welcome. Thank you for coming and enjoy uh, your, your stay here. Uh, welcome to the community. Thank you for uh, for the follow. That's the most follows I think I've ever got in a short period. Um, it's really great to have the support, everyone. Thank you for being here. Um, so what's this about trying to be an affiliate? Well, I have succeeded in achieving all the other goals um, I've got 55, well, probably what, six, seven, eight, 58 followers now. Thank you very much. Um, I've streamed for seven days in a month. This is the seventh stream today. And I'm at an average of 3.07 viewers per stream. And it needs to be an average of three or above. <laughs> so if I got three viewers throughout today's stream and no less, then that would bring me up to the average by the end of the seven streams. And it looks like with my begging and your help, <laughs> it's going to happen, which is great. Oh, come on. I've got to thread it through three holes. One here, here, and in that winch. And if I don't, it won't sit flat. There we go. There we go. All right. Yep, that's it. Let's get some glue in there. All righty. That's a big daub of glue. I don't need that much. Okay, and let's just hold that flat against that so the glue sets. How's that looking? Looks pretty straight. All right, now I'm just gonna put this one piece back on. I'm just gonna burn off the glue that's on there though. That's a bit cleaner. Candles um, burning very low. Sorry, I'm not reading chat at the moment. I'm uh, focused on this last piece. Devil's Brig, thank you for following. Welcome to the community. I uh, appreciate you coming by. Um, what brings you here? And how are you today? All right, that should be enough glue. Turn it over. Uh, this is so fiddly. There we go. Oh, now this piece is coming off. <laughs> it's always a balance between too much glue or too little. Oh, it's come right off. Yep. Oh, this is tricky. 
almost there. I thought I was with that last piece, but never mind. Um, I have been summoned. Ah, oh, well, if you did or you didn't, Jimmy, thank you very much. And thank you, uh, Devilsburg, was it? You're already off my chat screen. <laughs> uh, thank you for the follow. It's wonderful to have another friend here. All right, I think I might put a dob onto the the generator rather than on the, the hood that goes on top. So for those who are new, I'm building the uh, Japanese battleship Congo and from its 1944 configuration from World War II. And at the moment, I'm assembling the different parts, the pieces that go on top of the deck. And in this particular case, it's one of five winches which have a generator built on them. And each winch is made of, I think is it eight parts we've been working with? Maybe 10. And there we go. That's our first generator done. Neil, you can call him Jamie. Okay, Jamie. <laughs> oh, are you from, um, I like Cakes Community. Um, that's wonderful. Thank you for, for bringing folks along. You can call me whatever you like. At the moment, it's hard to call you anything because on your my screen, you're bl dark blue against a black background, so uh, I can't see it too well. Um, I had a piece of white paper here somewhere that I was using. Here we go. So just to show a bit more clearly. Oh, we're still going to bend that power cord around. I hope nothing else breaks off while I'm doing this. Surprisingly resilient stuff, this brass. There we go. Now we've got a finished generator and winch. How's that? All Australians know each other? Yeah, we are a bit. <laughs> we are a bit like that. So just to remind you the size of these things that I'm working on, there it is on my finger. So these are absolutely minuscule, but let me show you where they're gonna go. Now this won't be something that you can see on the, the uh, zoomed in camera. So you'll have to look at, oh, the selfie cam's gone again. What is going on? I think I need to set the do not sleep time. There we go. Hello. If you haven't seen me since you've come in, this is what I look like. Hello. <laughs> so this is her. This is Congo. I'll put it on the, the webcam at front. The exposure and focus is better there. So I've got a bit of um, painting to do back here. I did a bit of, um, everything's backwards on the camera. I did a bit of repair work here and I've masked it ready to paint, but I haven't done the painting yet. So the masking's on there still. Um, Oh, beautiful face, thank you. I appreciate that. How about now? Still beautiful? <laughs> um, so yes, this is the, the full hull. Um, she's a beautiful ship. And the uh, winch will be going on somewhere like... Um, let's see. Maybe like here. So you can see it on the wide view, but let's see if I can get it in the camera here, the close up. So I need to focus a little. There we go. And uh, to just give you a sense of the scale, uh, on this scale, a human being, a 1.8 meter human being would stand five millimeters tall. So that would be about as tall as the uh, the winch and generator you can see there, which is a uh, it's a big generator and it's a big ship, but the model kit is tiny. Like the scale is tiny. <laughs> so yes, it is fiddly, but I enjoy it. Um, since you're here, I'm going to show you some of the um, work in progress that I've already put together for this ship. So this is the aft superstructure. So uh, 
you can see here we've got one, two funnels. We've got the, uh, I suppose this is the, the main mast and the crow's nest up here. And these little handrails here, uh, you can't quite see. Let's put it on the, the big camera. Zoom in again, or focus. You can see those handrails there. They go up to about chest height. And you can see the little step ladder here. That step ladder is about a millimeter wide. And obviously it was to scale for human. Uh, how many hours have I worked on this already? Um, it'd be an estimate. I do want to get myself a, a clock that you can just press and then stop as a timer and just it'll go for hours. But I'm guessing maybe a couple of hundred hours, maybe 300 hours by now. Um, delicate hands. Uh, <laughs> Delicate tweezers. The tweezers are really what helps. <laughs> um, so I suppose we can look at this a bit on the uh, the close cam. So uh, yeah, there's the one of the funnels. You can see um, ladders running up the side. Oh, and this here, that's an anti-aircraft emplacement. You can see the, uh, the cannons. And can you see the little seats on either side? That's where the gunners sat. And one would control, they both have winches, and one would control up, down, and one would control left, right. Um, and further back, you can see a walkway going back to here. This is a rangefinder. It helps with the targeting at the top of that tower there. Uh, you can see another little ladder there. Uh, now that little door there, I forgot to remove that, but that gives you an idea of the detail that is in the plastic kit, the molding. But if we look further down here, uh, where are we? Um, okay, looks like this piece doesn't have any, but I've got some of the forward superstructure that I've been building. That does have some doors. So you can see there the doors, the detail that's on them by comparison. That's so intricate, it hurts my brain trying to comprehend. <laughs> have I got any other models I've built? Yes, I have. Um, before I built the, this ship model, or before I was working on this ship model, I built two other ships, um, and a couple of little Star Wars models too, because I also love Star Wars. Uh, uh, can't really, can really see how much you love this, makes it fun to watch. Oh, that's great, thank you. Um, I do love it. It's, um, very satisfying, and it's something I feel proud of, so, thank you. I'm really glad to hear that. All right. Part two, or winch two, I should say. So let's start with 601 and 602. <coughs> Just check the audio is still looking good. Yes, it is. All right, here we go. 601. Always put my finger on it to stop it from flying away. And now 602. All right, now some thick glue on the bottom piece. Spread that out nice and even. that on top get it nice and centered there we go hold it down for a moment the last piece I did like this didn't stick down immediately I had to put a bit of extra glue onto it all right five nine eight you know, I wonder, I should probably put a screen cap of the instructions of the thing I'm currently working on so that you can watch along. Uh, where would I fit that though? My screen's already pretty full. I'll have to think about that. I'll ask you guys, what do you think? Do you think that would be helpful if I took a screenshot of, uh, of these and stuck it on the screen somewhere while I'm working on it? You'd be able to follow along what I'm doing. Would that be helpful, do you think? Or would it take up too much screen space and you'd rather be able to see all the views that you've got now? So that's 
598. 598, there we go. Go okay, from the same column that I was already doing. way in there. Uh, in case you're wondering, we're listening to the uh, World of Warships soundtrack, which I thought was appropriate. Um, this is a, a mix of relaxing tunes from that game. Uh, if you're interested in naval history at all, or you just like, you know, big pew pew guns, uh, then you might enjoy World of Warships. It's um, a strategy action game. So the ships are slow. They're not like aircraft or, or vehicles. And they take a long time to, to steer, to accelerate, to brake. Uh, to brake, to stop. <laughs> so um, you have to think ahead uh, when you're doing it. And uh, I, I enjoy that aspect of it. I enjoy the tactical thinking. I'm not particularly good at it. But I've managed to get uh, to top tier in a couple of the lines, actually three of the lines, the Japanese cruiser line, Japanese battleship line, and the British cruiser line. Um, so yeah, it can't be too bad if I manage to get to tier 10, although it has taken me years to do it. <laughs> All right, we are now 614. I may as well put that in. Should I put that in next? Yeah, yep. Sometimes the uh, order you do things is important because you can stuff things up if you do in the wrong order. Now last time I bent this piece, it was really pretty important that I get it perpendicular. So I'm going to use my bending tool for this one. Um, that's going to be too wide or I'll have to just bend one side with it. Okay, there we go. That's one side. Now, I'll hold it down with the tweezers and bend up the other side. Oh, you're out of focus, I'm sorry. I had it focused before for the um, for the close-ups of the deck that, or the um, the superstructure that I was working on. I forgot to fix that. Need to bend that up. Come on, there we go. All right, that piece is good. Now to glue it in the middle. thick glue for that one I think. Just cleaning the applicator a little. That should be plenty. These are fairly tricky to manipulate. Okay, excellent. That went in well. Just try and push it down a little. Yep, that's good. Now we'll do the cradle that goes here. And that was Five nine seven. 
597. Bending tool for this one, and that's too wide, so we'll do it on that one. Need to turn it over. Maneuver it right into the middle. There we go. Alright, folding up. Tricky to get the uh, scalpel underneath it. There we are. And the other side. Excellent. As I had hoped. This is going smoother and faster than the first one. Oh boy, where'd that go? There it is. Okay. Bring back our base. And the glue. more than that that's probably too much but spread it out that'll be ample tricky tricky That's our base complete. Now we need to make the uh, the winch and the generator. I think I can straighten those a little bit more. All right, so we get out our turn brass pieces. I would love to see the lathe that these are turned on. It must be incredibly fine all right there and I'm just gonna cover it with both fingers so they don't go flying away put away this piece for the moment now we are on uh, 595 another one of these ones fold up the sides first and one of the edges I suppose the ends and that's the broad one so can we then it should be easier to hold this in my right hand And then just drop this in here and hold it from the other side. Almost. Let's hold it from further back. Come on, there we go. Uh, grab hold. I think I need to angle it from higher up. Oh, now it's come out. <laughs> In you go. There we go. And now I can fold this one up. Oh, it's not folding at that point, is it? Oh, I see what's happened. The 
this piece is folding in. Then I need to have this piece folding in. I probably should have folded the other one a little bit so that the crease was already there. Alright, let's bend that up now. Alright, now I can pass that through. There we go. Uh, got it. Uh, not quite. The whole thing is pushed back. twisting it in okay that looks pretty good on that side there we go all right glue time have I still got some thin glue there No, it's thickened up too much. That's alright. Another drop. I'm only really putting a drop of glue at a time on my tile. Well, a couple of drops maybe. side flip it over Tweezers to it. Alright, now I'm just going to see if I can straighten up those holes on the edges because um, last time that was what gave me a bit of trouble getting the generator on, it wasn't lining up. So let's see. to bend this out there a little bit okay that looks good and I don't think I'm going to glue these this time um, they're staying in place and I suspect that the glue may even have gotten in the way last time okay that's good I think that's ready to glue on the base That goes this end, and if I'm facing that away there, it goes this way. That needs some new thick glue as well now. So how is everyone today? What did you get up to? You doing anything special? I know in Melbourne it was a nice day. The weather was lovely. Although it's a Tuesday, so I guess uh, most folks would have been at work? Question mark? <laughs> I'm a contracts uh, real estate photographer. And uh, I don't know if you're aware, at least in Melbourne or over in Australia, I'm pretty sure it's around the world too though, but the real estate market has kind of collapsed. So I've got very little work on at the moment, which is nice in, a, in one way, but mostly it's terrible. 
Um, yeah, it's been uh, a struggle to pay the bills recently. But I'm enjoying the time off. Alright, I think I might reinforce that with a little bit of thin glue just into the joins. Beautiful, and no excess. Fantastic, that's gone well. All right, now the generator. Actually, the generator I'll put straight on here, and then I'll glue the other parts onto the whole assembly. So I need to thread this through these holes, which was a tricky part last time. And I think I'll put it through without glue first. That looks all right. And I'll put a bit of glue on now. That's probably too much glue, but honestly, oh, I don't want this to move once it's in. Okay, that's good. This is going well. Two more pieces, or two more parts for this piece. Hello, Aki. All right, so we've got five nine four and five nine six. I think I'll cut them both out because they both have to be done at pretty much the same time. Let's do the small one first, just to get the more annoying one out of the way. Alright, I think I can bend up three pieces from here. There we go, and I can do the third side just by hand, or well, the fourth side I should say. Oh, the face cam's gone again, sorry about that, one second. I think it must be uh, auto power down on that camera. I will fix that after the stream. But thank you for letting me know, Bigger Wood. Oop. Oh boy. Oh, phew. I found it. <laughs> I have lost more parts than I can count by them flying off while I've been bending them. Let's uh, put this piece at the back and then I can bend the other three up. Actually, that's upside down. 
There we go. I think that's the end of the music playlist. Give me one second to lock this down and then I'll loop it. Okay, there we go. Uh, let's fix the face cam. And the music. And we're back. Face cam and music. Yes, I can hear the music. All right, bending time. And my middle name is not Bender. <laughs> Or was it Bending? Yeah, Bending is his middle name, that's right. Rodriguez. Future armor reference if you want. Aren't uh, cultured enough to know what I'm talking about. Folding up that last, last side. There we go. And now we just stick them on. He says as if it's easy. <laughs> okay, I'll do this piece first. And I think I'll put glue onto that. to manipulate just want to turn it upside down that's all there we go I think all the glue is up inside that hopefully that's enough to hold it and I'll reinforce it with a bit of thin Too much. Damn it. See if I can soak some of that back up into the applicator. No. no well, hopefully it'll dry thin. Maybe I can just drop this piece on top of that now. Which side has got the curve? That side, okay. Rotate it 180 and drop it on. No, the glue's already dried. All right. Put a dab of thick on there, I think. There we go. Oh, still got to bend the power cord around the back. Oops. I squeezed that. I don't know if it was too hard. Yikes. Okay. It looks like it's all in 
in the right shape, it's not bent too much. Okay, one more dab of glue in there just to be sure. Get the cat hair off it because there's always a cat hair. There we go. Oh, that's uh, not on completely. Oh, yes, it is. It's glued in now. I'd like to get this flat, but it's not budging. It's good enough. I'll put it in one of the little less obvious places. All right, there's our second winch. What time is it? Quarter past 11. I'm gonna do at least one more. All right, speed run time. Not really speed run. As soon as you start doing this fast is when you start making mistakes. But given the last two um, builds have gone well. I'm confident that I can do okay this time. nine followers now wow that's fantastic i think that's four i've gained today thank you very much to all the new followers ah first time chats ah oh, bk sadly can't watch right now but so it is called message so i'm a lurk thank you very much bk i really appreciate the support uh it's much appreciated uh, it's good to have you here sorry you can't watch but i understand um hopefully there will be a time when our schedules align that you'll be able to uh, but uh, the lurk is much appreciated. All right, so we'll do that centerpiece again, which was here. Oops. They fly off very easily. Just got to turn it over. There we go. Bend that up. Do the other side by hand. These tweezers are too thick, I have to just use one side. That's not folding right. Ah, uh, I was folding the wrong side. That's the side I need to fold. trying to get these vertical as possible all right I think that's good now to attach that to the base probably put a bit too much glue on there but 
it's not really going to be seen once it's on. There we go. Alright, now the cradle, which is 597. And that's there. Flip it over, because that's the side with the creases. And now we stick it down. I was joking about the speed run, but this is going really well. I should probably shut up about that though, because that will make it go a lot harder. Good old Murphy and his laws. That's the base done. Now for the winch component, which was this nice big part. Uh, what is it? Five nine five. I'm going to bend up both these a little bit because last time I had trouble keeping them square. And now I should be able to squeeze in the turned part. I should do it this way. Got more clearance there. Alright. There we go. I'm going to leave that nearby. Tricky, tricky. Okay. I think I need to bend them a little bit closer together first. Now let's try and put that in. So springy, this stuff. There we go. Come on. There we go. Excellent.
in those side pieces a bit again. Yep, that looks good. Alright, now for the glue. <coughs> this, I think, is the most satisfying part um, need a bit more, of this particular sub um, subcomponent build. Watching the uh, super thin glue just wick into this tiny little gap. I don't know if you can see it on the, uh, the close-up camera, it's a pretty small thing. Really, uh, hang on, just got to clean my applicator a little bit. Why didn't that burn off? I'll try that again. Alright. I'll try and make it so that you can see it there on that angle. Open it up just enough to stick this in. There it goes. Little drop just wicks into the uh, the gap. And there's the other side. There we go. All right. On course for a world record speed run here, guys. Oh, I forgot a piece. That's what happens when you do a speed run. It's okay. Still got time to put it in. It's the, uh, the piece that goes here that this sits on. Now, what one was that? Five nine eight. Here we are. That's good. And now the winch. And the big end goes towards me. sit well no nope, I remember I do the generator barrel next getting a little bit stiff in the neck from all this hunched, hunching over so I might actually finish up after I finish this one but it's been a great stream so far with lots of support and I really appreciate that. I think it's safe to say I've made the uh, average of three viewers. We're currently on three now. We've had three or more as far as I can tell for the whole stream, which is great. So hopefully next time I stream, I might have some cool things for you to play with. I'd like to think about what I want to do for points redeems and stuff like that. That in far enough, it's not. Oh, 
Come on. Get in there. Okay, I'm going to cheat. I should have done this with the other ones. I'm just going to trim a tiny little piece off the end of this shaft so it doesn't have to go in that last hole. You will never see it on the, mo on the model. that hole there we go now the second one I think the first one is actually blocking it hmm it uh whoop. this piece here widens there uh, I think I stuck this piece on backwards I'm not going to pull it apart now because that will be too damaging so I'm just going to have this generator sit a little bit further back but no one will ever notice that get some glue on that before it falls out again. Oops, it fell out again. Okay, that should do. I'll put a bit of thin CA on there as well, just to reinforce it. Yep, that's reinforced. All right, now the uh, the two square pieces that go on the back of that. Oop, stuck to my tweezers. That glue wasn't quite dry when I picked it up. All right, so two more pieces to do, and I finished the third winch. And um, I'll definitely I'll finish up the stream after I finish that one, because the back is getting a little sore. Old man problems. <laughs> This is the, uh, oh no, I've got more of the ice so I thought this was the last piece of this number, but there are others, which is a relief. Okay, I'll do the small one first. Need to turn it over first. There we go. Actually, I'll bend the other side first. Tricky to manoeuvre. There we go. So, one, two, Three. And four. 
And now the same with the larger piece. those last two pieces on. Uh, this time I think uh, the last couple of times I tried putting the glue on the block pieces, the square pieces, and um, it was a bit of an issue. So I'm going to try putting it on the, the generator bit first. side has the curve, that side. So I'm just going to go around, drop it on. There we go, that looks square. So does that. Alright, give it a second to cure. Might put a drop of super thin, ultra thin, whatever it's called, on the back here. There we go. That should be firmly held in place now. What is it actually called? Super thin. There we go. And now we bend the power cord in place. done. Let's put that aside for a moment. So we've got one. Oh, there's still a little wet on this one. Two, and three. They look pretty cool lined up like that, don't they? Oh, hang on. This one. These have rolled around. Oh, that's why. All right, we're not done yet. Now this white is actually really great for visibility. I might um, scrap the the work mat 
and use a new piece of white paper each time. Uh, yeah. I was hoping not to have to get another drop of glue, but the thick glue is all thick now. It's it's starting to solidify, so I need a tiny, tiny bit more. Just a touch of the tip of the um, tube. thread this in and I've got to get the orientation right so it's pushing vertically Some ultra thin, uh, super thin in. Okay, and that should hold now. There we go. So let's do that again. them a little differently this time actually yeah like that so there we go today's work three three winches oh, and the camera's gone again definitely need to fix that there we go all right Bukami, sorry I had a clash with my stream and it's my tidiness. Ah, oh, I'm so sorry. I'm just finishing up now. Um, but you can see what I've achieved tonight. I've built one, two, three uh, winches with their accompanying generators. Uh, three out of five that are needed for the ship. So uh, my back's getting a little bit sore now. I've been streaming for over two hours. So uh, it's time to finish up. You are lurking? Oh, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Having that extra view count really helps. Um, I think I've averaged about four today, so that will mean, hopefully, um, the next time you see me, I'll be streaming as an affiliate. But um, thank you very, very much for everyone who came by. Thank you for the four, I think, four or five new followers. Uh, and thank you for the support that you gave me tonight. It was really wonderful. Um, I appreciate it, and I look forward to being an affiliate for you next time. I'll have to think about what sort of uh, points redeems I can do for you. But I will leave it there tonight. Uh, thank you again for coming. I hope you all have a lovely evening or afternoon or morning, whatever it is for you. And I will see you in the next stream. Good night.